Everybody, good day, good day, good day. Thank you all for tuning in to this very important show. You are viewing and watching or listening and tuning in to See You Talk with Clara Hubbard, your resource and information show for people getting better with age. So to all of our community partners and people who are watching, getting e-blast, thank you, thank you, thank you. We're under construction. Our website is under construction. Previously known as Senior Talk with Claire Hubbard is now Senior Talk Media, which means what? We got a lot of ground to cover, bringing you radio, TV, podcast, events. We're creating a network for our seniors known as People Getting Better with Age. Well, speaking of people getting better with age, and one of the most classiest gentlemen and nicest human beings that I've known for quite a while is none other than the president, CEO, and founder of Great Lakes Clinical Trials, my good friend, Mr. Steve Saystack. Let me tell you. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. We are together once again. How are you this beautiful day? I'm great. It's so awesome to see you again. I'm so glad to be on this. And I love your theme song music going on there. It's just really, really sharp. Got to awesome get, get, right. get it kicked off right. <laughs> so one of the things that I want to tell our community is that um, we want to reintroduce to some and then introduce to others the services of Great Lakes Clinical Trial. Uh, this organization has been around for quite a few years, catching ground across the city of Chicago, surrounding suburbs, and a place near you just about, and uh, making sure that our beloved older Americans and people who are dealing with the um, area of memory loss are educated. One of the things that I have to say, and Steve, I'll let you do the intro, we love, love, love Great Lakes Clinical Trial because we are not selling anything. Mm -hmm. We're educating. And that is the whole premise of Senior Talk with Clara Hubbard. We look to educate the community at large, i.e. families and all the things that come with it. So welcome everybody once again, Mr. Steve Saystack, Great Lakes yeah. Clinical Trial founder, president, and um, you. I wish I could look at your feet because you're normally <laughs> rolling on the ground somewhere. And let me say this in advance, and I can say this, Great Lakes Clinical Trial can be anywhere you want. If you have a block club meeting, if you have a red hat, pink hat meeting, a veterans affairs meeting, you name it, they will come to your community and educate anywhere at any time because that is their mission. And so I'm just, I'm a friend and a friend and glad that they're joining us once again. So welcome again, Steve. How are you this beautiful day? You said you're doing well. Tell me the I, truth. What's really going on? I'm actually doing really, really well. Um, you know, I'm excited that we're coming out of this pandemic and we can actually start seeing each other again and kind of get out there in, in public and, and do some of that educating. You know, um, I, I'm glad you introduced uh, us that way because, you know, we do clinical trials, we do research here. And, you know, research is right for some people, it's not right for other people, but people need to be educated to know if it's right or wrong. So that's our job is to go out there and make sure people understand what is clinical, what are clinical trials? What are the good advancements that we're doing right now? And let people make a decision if they want to join a research study or not. But education is key. It's well, power. Let, me, let me say this. Um, having us all preferably, hopefully have been vaccinated. Guess what? <laughs> Someone had to do a trial for that. That's right. <laughs> so, that is the joy and the benefit that someone took the opportunity to, to be mm -hmm. tried on the vaccines so that we can have this experience. So yep. that, the trials are needed in many, many things. So yeah. let's you know, talk actually, about Claire, one, thing, one thing I want to point out about that, too, you probably don't even know this. We actually did a lot of that COVID vaccine research right here at Great Lakes. And I was really proud that we had over 30% black and minority um, um, uh, participation in our research studies because the community got out there and was very interested in doing research in the area of COVID. So we actually did those trials over the last year and a half. Wow. What were the, um, what were the, the, the conversations like? Because, you know, we're dealing with something that unfortunately has taken so many lives. Yeah. So people are taking a sacrifice to, to, to participate. What, mm -hmm. was, what was that challenge for Great Lakes? Because you're so hands-on with people daily in information. What was that challenge like for you? You know, the biggest challenge is, is trust. You know, there's, you know, we live in a world right now where there is so much misinformation out there and you don't know what is right or what is wrong. 
And we have to kind of like swim through all that and just build the trust with individuals. So having that conversation, whether it was on the phone or whether we did Zoom calls or with people who came into the clinic, just building trust with people, explaining exactly what we're doing and, and how it's going to advance, you know, science and medicine and make us a healthier, um, healthier community. It's that trust was the biggest challenge we had to, to overcome. There's so much mistrust out there right now. You know yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so and, you, you have to be honest, sincere, and you have to be, have a lot of authenticity. Absolutely. So let's do this. We're going to take um, a small break. We want to show everyone Great Lakes Clinical Trial in action. And um, let me say this in advance. Senior Talk does not own the rights to this video. This was from the Jam TV show uh, a few years back. But I think this will give everyone a little more opening start to our conversation ahead. So That's everyone, right. stay tuned. Memory loss, it's affecting our aging population. And for many of us, that means our parents. And there have been advances in Alzheimer's research, which provide hope for a cure and a prevention. However, there is still more that we need to know. So we headed out to learn how Great Lakes clinical trials are helping in the fight to prevent memory loss. Great Lakes Clinical Trials is a medical research clinic located on the north side of the city of Chicago. We're like a regular medical clinic, but the real purpose for the work that we do is to test new medications and devices and nutritional products to see if they actually can get FDA approval and to be used in the public sector. We're researching new medications and treatments and therapies for treating the source of memory loss, not just putting a band-aid over the, the disease. Becoming a, a pretty large epidemic across the, uh, the United States, in this um, state of Illinois alone, there's well over 200,000 people who have been diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. We need to make sure that we have the right facilities, support networks, treatments, and everything available to take on this, this up and coming, um, this epidemic. If people can take the subway or the, the CTA, that's great. If not, we will send a car to pick people and bring them up to our clinic. We want to make it as easy as possible for people to join clinical trials and not make that a, bar a barrier to entry. And all of these services are provided at no cost. We do not take insurance cards. We do not take Medicare, Medicaid. All of our funding for our research is provided from grant support. I just want our senior population to know that there are options out there for them to participate in clinical trials. Because without participation in a clinical trial, we're never gonna get a new medication or therapy to market. Well, to learn more about how you can get involved in these clinical trials, just head on over to GreatLakesClinicalTrials.com. Wow. Who was that guy? He looked really smart. <laughs> well, the frames he had on. He was the frames too. So, so Steve, let's let's see. How many years has Great Lakes Clinical Trial been in existence? You know, we're in our seventh year now. Um, okay. It seems like it's gone by so fast, but it's seven years now. Yes. And one of the things that we want to address really is there is such a, a trust factor or a mistrust factor with African-Americans. We're underrepresented and we at some times have the most resistance to the information knowing we may be facing that. So give us um, what are the current trials that we're researching? Let's talk about the memory, you know, let's be honest. We've been almost in our homes or non-sociable for 15 months. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I get it. So, you know, where, what, what can we do? I mean, just, just lead us into, you know, talking about recognizing memory loss or just maybe a need for a little more attention to, you know, the daily regiments of a family member or loved one. Gotcha. So, you know, um, clinical trials are really interesting. There's all sorts of different types of clinical trials. There's clinical trials where you take a medication. There's clinical trials where you actually might test a food product. There's clinical trials where there are no medication or food product. We're just doing some testing uh, to, to see what your diagnosis is and that sort of thing. So I think people need to understand when they when they contact us, there's a whole range of, of opportunities for, in front of them. And in fact, one of the studies we're doing right now is literally just a a study, a, a study to see if people are having memory loss or not, or it's just regular normal aging. So we do like a series of memory tests with individuals. We also um, will do a blood test to see if they actually have like the Alzheimer's gene, if they're more predisposed to developing Alzheimer's disease. 
We'll, um, we'll actually do brain scans to see if your brain is having the changes of, of somebody who actually has memory loss. And there's no medications involved. We're just doing these testings to see if they can actually predict if you actually are more predisposed to developing Alzheimer's disease. And the first question I always get is like, why would I want to know? I don't want to know those things. Right, right. This is what I tell people over and over again is, yeah, you don't have to know. But I myself, I like to know because if, if I am more likely to develop memory loss or if I am going down that path, I want to do something about it. Mm -hmm. If I don't do anything about it, I'm just going down that path. But if I join a clinical trial or if I start eating better, if I start getting more exercise, there's a ton of things you can do. I want to know where I am and where I stand so that I can make a change in my life to actually improve my, my health. And, you know, one of the things that I'm learning um, and just love, you know, when I came to the office, I'm learning now that some of our disparities tie into the other. Mm. You know, we're learning now that sometimes diabetes mm -hmm. may trigger into dementia. I'm like, are you exactly. I mean, who would have thought that, you know, two of these so, different things, but is it, I mean, what, what would be that factor that you could say about that? Because I'm cool. learning that recently and I'm like, this is, we really need to attract, <laughs> a, a, really grab onto our disparities right away. Cause we yeah. haven't addressed them through the pandemic at all. We yeah. were just trying to get through. We were just you trying know. to survive, you know? <laughs> you know, I, um, there, there's, I, I do a number of talks around the community and I talk about like eight things you can do to actually improve your brain health. And you just touched on one of those pillars and that's the risk factors. Um, things like diabetes, hypertension, obesity, smoking, um, those sorts of things can actually increase your risk for developing memory loss and developing Alzheimer's disease. So those are things you can easily get in check. You know, go to your doctor. If you actually have high glucose or if you're actually approaching become diabetic, diabetic you know what? Start changing your diet, get some more exercise, start to see if you can reduce it down before you start to have to take medications. There's a lot of these risk factors can be controlled before they get too bad. Yeah. And once you get too bad, it's harder to control them. So controlling right. risk factors is so important and, and can actually lead to, to memory loss. So there is an intertwined uh, thing going on there. Absolutely. So one of the things that's the standard question is, is it hereditary? Hmm. Yeah, we get that a lot too. And um, th there's two answers. Um, there is a link. There is a hereditary link to, to Alzheimer's disease. Now, it's not guaranteed. If both of your grandparents, both your grandparents, or all four of your grandparents, and both of your parents have Alzheimer's disease, you are not guaranteed to get Alzheimer's disease. Mm -hmm. You're at a higher risk for it, but it's not guaranteed. Um, there's also some individuals that have their parents and grandparents who are smart as can be all through their life, died in, the, in their hundreds you can still develop Alzheimer's disease. Yeah. So there is a risk. We just know that if you do have parents that actually had Alzheimer's disease, they might have passed down some genes to you that make you look more likely to develop Alzheimer's disease. But if you can do things to prevent it, you know, there are some medications that we're looking at, we're testing right now to see if they can prevent development to Alzheimer's disease. There's things you can do with your diet, exercise, different um, health changes that, that actually can help deter the progression to Alzheimer's disease. Absolutely. Yep. Now, having been at your office, I mean, it is one of the most cleanest places in the world. <laughs> but, but not to say, I mean, I mean, I'm just putting that out there. But what I remember uh, my time there, and I think, um, and I, let me say first of all, thank you for your sponsorship because we're coming into the community. We're mm -hmm. going to be doing a senior talk, live and learn series, and we're going to do it on Wednesdays. Mm -hmm. And in that series, and we've done it once before, we're going to be doing. That 12, that middle hour is when Great Lakes will come in and we're going to do memory jogging because I think that is something that we don't address. I mean, memory jogging is a good thing. And I like to play and we're going to have Chicago veteran DJ Al Greer with us because he plays old school music. And we're going to tie it into your presentation because that's a good filter. Memory yep. jogging. Tell us how that aspect can help us maybe, you know, bring back um, to, to see where our memory level is at that time. You know, um, that's a, actually you tied into one of my other discussions I talk about with brain health is actually exercising your brain and, mm -hmm. and actually keep your brain kind of active. Um, you have to use your you use it or you lose it. Right. So just keep working on it as much as possible. So doing trivia, doing Sudoku or, or crossword puzzles, anything you can do to kind of keep your brain active is, is super important. So I love trivia games and that sort of thing. So it actually ties into two things. It's it's one jogging your brain and kind of kind of moving that along but you're more social and being social with individuals, yeah. talking to individuals, that's a huge thing. We do know that people who actually have Alzheimer's disease or are in that progression, 
tend to pull out of society. They, they don't engage in conversa conversations as much. They actually sit on the sidelines. They're not contributing. So if you can keep contributing to conversations and do these games and that sort of thing, it's fantastic. So, you know, I always say, you know, there's no harm in doing crossword puzzles and Sudoku and stuff. It's great. Right. But you know what? Play bridge. Go, go out there and do something that you're actually communicating with somebody while you're playing the games, right? Well, I know the high, the highest, the, the most popular game now is bingo. Bingo. <laughs> bingo is the biggest game going now. Exactly. exactly. I'm fine with that. <laughs> yeah, but you tapped on something that we have to address. Just because you are getting better with age and may have, you know, I think there was this uh, years ago we were together. It's like just because you misplace your keys does hmm. not mean that you have dementia. No, you know, absolutely. and if you would, because we do have quite a few people who are listening, viewing, let's talk about the term Alzheimer's versus dementia, because yep. one is the umbrella that everything else falls under. And you we have learned. We're just, not, we're just not, we're not, not, we're not knowledgeable. So we may, yep. you know, break it down for me, Steve. So, so as you actually hit the nail on the head. So dementia. um Present a co co, co chair or something. No. Okay. I'm, just, I'm just joking, but go ahead. You're doing a great yeah, job. You hit the nail on the head. So the the, um, the the term dementia is an umbrella term. It's it actually means cognitive impairment or, or memory loss or confusion. It's just it's cognitive impairment. Mm -hmm. And then underneath that umbrella, you have Alzheimer's disease dementia. You have Lewy body dementia. You have vascular dementia. There's a whole slew of different types of dementia. Mm -hmm. um, think of it as cancer, Clara. So cancer is an umbrella. You have breast cancer, you have you know, prostate cancer, you have some of the bloodborne cancer. So cancer is an umbrella term and you know there's different types of cancer. Dementia is an umbrella term and then there's different types of uh, dementia. Alzheimer's disease is, is by far the most common type of dementia. It's found in anywhere between 50 to 75% of people with dementia. So a lot of times people use the terms interchangeably between dementia and Alzheimer's disease. Yeah. But honestly, they the, the, I think the formal term for it is uh, dementia of the Alzheimer's type. So it just shows that it's just a type of, of dementia. I want to play a video from our time together some years ago on Fox News. And then I want you to really just dive into it because we're working now, especially now that we have the potential of this COVID vaccination under wraps, for lack of a better term. We, we need to come out to the community. So we're asking Block Club, Blood Drive, you just name it. We need invitations. And the senior talk number is scrolling below because one of the things we know is African Americans are risk we're misrepresented, we're underrepresented in these trials. And sometimes we may not even seek out the additional help that we need. Mm -hmm. So some of us will tend to self-diagnose and then we'll just, you know, not even seek further help where there is treatment in some regards. And so, I think it comes down to education, Clara. People are not educated. They don't know that there's something else they can do. They don't know about clinical trials and this right. joint. So you're going back to your very first talking point. Absolutely. So everyone stay tuned. Um, if you're open, please share your comments on Facebook Live and YouTube. You are watching this on Senior Talk Media on Facebook Live and YouTube. Everyone stay tuned and we'll be right back after this very important message. Million Americans. Five million are suffering right now from Alzheimer's disease, a number that is expected to triple, believe it or not, by 2050. Surprisingly, African Americans are two to three times more likely to develop Alzheimer's. Joining us with details in a new study that's designed to determine exactly why that is, is Claire Hubbard, a community ambassador. Thanks for being here. My first question, because I really don't know what a community ambassador is. What do you do? Well, I have the pleasure of being the host of a radio show here in Chicago called Senior Talk with Claire Hubbard. And so my responsibility is to make Make sure that I advocate on behalf of those who are underserved, who can't benefit from themselves. And so the ambassador part has taken on, I've partnered with Great Lakes Clinical Trial, who are the number one in North America on Alzheimer's and dementia testing. And so we're here today to talk about this great study that has the potential of saving and bringing families closer together. Yeah, the numbers are really startling. Um, can we talk a little bit of specifics? Do we know what it is uh, at all about where Alzheimer's is impacting the African-American community, or rather why it is? Is, is it solely to, to determine why people of color are being hit in more frequent numbers than, than other people? Well, the first thing is that we're underrepresented in trials and testing, okay. and we fail to participate. So that's our first angle, is to make sure that we take part in the studies that will give us the access to what everyone else receives. Uh, there's one in three senior citizens who will 
die, unfortunately, of Alzheimer's, but it's twice as likely for African Americans because we don't participate in the trials. But there's research right now. All right, let's talk about this study. It's an A4 study, and uh, who are the people that you're looking for to participate in the study? Well, we're looking for those who are 65 to 85. Okay. Because we know there is some form of weight, or not, not weight loss, but there's some of memory loss. But more importantly, um, we need people who may have been affected by their own family members, and now it's time for them to check because sometimes it's seen to be hereditary. Are we looking for people who are symptomatic, or are we talking about people who, like you said, perhaps have it genetically within their family and are not yet showing any symptoms? Well, the, the initial thing is to just participate and be a part of the research because you don't know. I mean, okay. the average person may think, oh, I lost my keys and I can't find it for 10 minutes. That's not considered dementia. Don't panic. But then we have the resources now to make sure that we take you through a process that can educate your family on the proper symptoms. All right, let's talk about uh, some study specifics. Are we talking about a specific drug that's going to be tested? And if so, will there be a, a group that's taking the drug and a group that's taking a placebo? And then you'll compare? Are you, are you, and, and what sort of sample size are you looking for? Are you looking for a lot of people to well, doing our research, we would need literally a 10,000 plus okay. just to narrow down that 1,000. Okay. to get to the number of people that we want to serve. But then also we're learning that this A4 study is brand new. So that's why we need to give African Americans a chance to participate because we're being affected more. Okay, so if I'm at home and I'm watching this and I'm thinking this might be something I'm interested in, what's my first step? What do I need to do? The first thing you would do is call my community partner's Great Lakes Clinical Trial. And they're at 773-275-30. 500-773-275-3500. I think any time we're talking about a study, uh, we always have concerns about potential side effects. Are those type of things going to be addressed with people before they obviously would, would consider uh, entering the study? Absolutely. The first thing that we do is we don't just shove you into a study. We educate you and make sure that you're knowledgeable of what's being happened or what you're going to go through and educate you before you're given this opportunity and you walk in and just give a medicine. Is there a window? Is there a deadline? How soon do we need to act on this? We can act immediately. Uh, this is a three-year prior, three-year three okay. trial, so we need to act now, and we can assist. And I understand the people that would be participating, they would need to go and see a physician, is it what, once a month? Well, those things can be ironed out, but it is once okay. a month. Yes, it is. All right, so for more information, it's a4study.org? a4study.org, or they can go to greatlakesclinicaltrials.com. Claire Hubbard, thanks so much. My Appreciate pleasure. Thank you. Still ahead on your Tuesday, are the Bears going to say so long to one of their very best wide receivers? And have you had a punt? <laughs> I remember those good times. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. That was such a good memory. I had to pull that out. Yeah, really? That was really, really good. <laughs> I, have to, I have to say I, so myself. And I just want to clarify for your listeners today, that study is not open anymore. It was a little right. while back. But we are doing other studies very similar to it. Um, so if you are interested in, in, um, in, in joining a trial or talking to us, that phone number still works, though. That's 773-275-3500, um, which you got right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what we want to find out is, is there how many men participate? Because, you know, men are affected as well. And I don't know if there's a balance between men and women in the trials, but we would like to see more men show up. You know, it is Men's Health Month, this month of June. Yep. We'd love men to come and be active because as a lot of your promos say that we're putting on our website, you're doing it for your loved one. You're yep. doing it for those that you will leave behind in honor or as a legacy. So why do we have men coming aboard? What's, what's the stats on that, Steve? Talk to you me. You know, you are raising awareness here because there is a lack of representation of men in, in Alzheimer's disease trials. Mm -hmm. Think about it in our, in our personal life, Clara. Men are pretty, just in general, I don't want to be too general, but in general, right. men are stubborn and they don't ask for help, right? Yeah. Women are like, I'm going to get my help and I'm going to go there and, and yeah. solve the problem. You know, even driving, men won't ask for directions, right? Right. Um, so that's what's happening in, I think, in the area of memory loss. Men are actually holding on to it. They don't want to admit that they're actually they're, they're actually going through something. And so you'd have less people, um, less men joining clinical trials. I mean, we're still seeing, it's probably about a 55% female, 45% male. So we're still decent representation, but it should be a little bit more equal. Um, but we definitely see that. So we have a listener, Watika Klein Peter. We love you, Watika. She's one of our loyal viewers. She says, Do all of your studies require medication? 
They no. The, the answer is no. Some of them do not. Um, we just we just closed a study that actually was looking at exercise. We were actually sending people to the YMCA, and we were actually testing their memory to see if if exercise can actually help um, reduce their um, memory decline. So um, that study is not open right now, but that was an example of a study that we didn't use a medication. We've also done studies with nutritional supplements, um, and as I mentioned um, earlier, we're doing a study right now. We're actually just looking to help diagnose um, memory loss a little bit better. So there's no medication involved in, in that study either. You know, what I want people to understand is that, you know, coming out of this pandemic, we just need to just reignite our bodies, fresh air, the weather's on our side mm -hmm. and and participate. And I do invite people and listen, listen, some of us will just not do it. Let's be clear. But for those who will, or if you want to pass it on to someone, there are many community organizations out where you would, um, or events where you would have to pay for this information. But why not jump ahead of the game and, and be forward enough to come out to meet Great Lakes Clinical Trial or call the number? So let me say this, I'm going to make sure that I put the number on our screen during this broadcast. And that is, you can call 773-275-3500. So that is what we're going to tell people. If you're interested, if you have community events, we have a lot of people doing food drives. I mean, if we can drop off flyers to, to your community events, just let us know. But it's imperative that we get this information in place. Exactly. It's just all, again, it's all about education. You know, the other thing I just want to point out, Claire, I had a, a, a patient that I saw yesterday who came in who had some memory loss, and he actually said, I'm doing this because of my children. Um, I, I actually want to be, first of all, I want to be around for my children, but if I can do something that's going to help get a medication approved so that they don't have to go through what I'm going through, I'm I'm all in. So there, there's this whole legacy aspect of what you're going to do for future generations. Well, you know, we have a lot of people who um, we're just afraid, Steve. Let's be clear. Yep. And, and because of the history of trials mm -hmm. over the years, mm -hmm. I just I think the presentation is great. I love what you and Steve are saying, Claire, but it's just not enough to convince me to really take a risk at this time. Mm -hmm. What do you say to that that viewer or listener? You know, um, times have changed. Um, we, you know, we have a lot of regulations that have been put in place. I know a lot of people are like, oh, the government regulations, we don't want that. Right. We want regulations in clinical trials because we want to protect the safety of our, our patients. So you talked about it very much, much earlier. Um, you know, we educate people before you join a clinical trial, before you ever take a medication, we make sure you know 100% exactly what you're getting involved in, exactly what the prior experience has been with patients who have been on the trial, the risks, the benefits, all that stuff is actually explained to you. And if you don't understand it, you ask questions and we actually just help you understand it. It's a conversation and a communication that we have with every patient to build that trust, to educate people before they take that next step. And that's, that's what it comes down to. Absolutely. So let me ask you this. Um, what can we do to encourage more men to participate? I mean, I'm so stuck on it. I mean, I know how men are just afraid to participate. They don't even want to go to the doctor. Sometimes they're in intimidated by the facilities. I've heard that. You know, some yep. men said they've just been intimidated because of maybe the ratio of men to women in the doctor's office. Mm -hmm. So how do we encourage that men? And then in closing, Steve, please tell me, what are the testimonies? You have to have testimonies over seven years, being a leader in clinical research for Alzheimer's and dementia. What are your testimonies? So that'll be your closing remark. Okay, fantastic. Well, I think what you have to do with men, you have to actually have that conversation. A lot of time men don't want to have the conversation, but you have to actually have that conversation. Um, a lot of times men won't speak up. They won't have the conversation because they don't think there's hope out there. They don't think there's anything they can do. They actually feel that they're being weak. And I think if you're a, a woman speaking to a man about this, if you're actually, if your loved one, be there as support for them. Mm -hmm. be there saying, you know, I know this is not easy for you, yeah. but I'm there to be your your solid brick there to actually help you through this, this process. So that there is less fear and there's less um, you know, unknown out there. You're gonna go through it together and make sure that they're not alone. 
that's that's all I can say. I mean, it's all about education. Um, and I think testimonies, it's just, you know, I, I gosh, there's so many of them because I see so many patients coming through my door and I actually try to make a, 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 an effort to see almost every single one of them because even though I own the company, that's not, that's not below me. I actually am there side by side with individuals. We had a, a, a couple um, that, that came up from Memphis. Um, they actually relocated to Chicago and they were in a clinical trial down there. And they said, we want to continue in this clinical trial. Hey, Great Lakes, can we actually shift and actually start see, coming up to your office and, and actually participate in research here? And it actually was a male mm -hmm. that actually joined the, the, the dementia trial. And so, you know, now they're, they're our best friends here. We see them every couple of weeks. They come back for their their, uh, their visits. And it's just such a pleasure. And it's, it's so nice to see people from outside of the Chicagoland area coming here and recognizing the, the good work that Great Lakes is doing. We have some really good um, research centers around the Chicagoland area, you know, Rush and Northwestern University of Chicago. They're all fantastic places. And I just want people to know we're doing the same research that's being done at those locations. We just have it in a much, I, I think of it as a much more comfortable environment. You know, we're yeah. three yeah. level entrance. There's not stairs and elevators and everything to take. We actually just try to make it as convenient as possible. And you mentioned it earlier too, we provide transportation to our patients. So if a patient's coming up from, from Southside or from Barnesville, we'll actually provide a, a lift to, to bring the patients up to our center for free of charge. Absolutely. So we have one question um, from Betty Jennings who said at one of your lectures, you said you do a, is it PET scan? Yep. Okay. What happened if you were allergic to iodine? Um, PET scan, iodine is not used in, in PET scans. So that's not, um, that's actually used more in uh, like CT scans and, and other scans, but PET scans do not actually use iodine. Um, but there is, a, there is a contrast um, that actually happens. So you, there is an, you get a, an infusion of a, a kind of a contrast dye to, uh, before you actually have the PET scan. And for those of you that don't know a PET scan, what a PET scan can do um, is actually we'll do a PET scan of your brain and we can see if there's changes going on in your brain that are just like a person who has Alzheimer's disease. And we can see if those changes are happening before you start to have memory loss. Mm -hmm. So we look at it as kind of a predictive measure to say, hey, you're doing pretty good, okay, but something's going on in your brain right now. Yeah. Let's see if we can do something to change that path. Um, well, the, now this is your final statement here because I, I really want to know what changes have you seen over the last seven years being Great Lakes clinical trial? What have been the changes in the trials, the participation and all that good stuff? What has been the, the real wealth of what you're doing? You know, I for, first of all, your, your guest that actually just asked about a PET scan, I'm like, seven years ago, nobody knew what a PET scan was. And so our, our patients are coming here asking for PET scans. And again, we do them free of charge here. So there's just a, there is better knowledge out there. I think we have a long way to go, um, but people are getting educated. They're talking to their family and friends. They're building up a pool of information in their community. And I like to see that happening. So I think that that's, that's a, um, a bonus. But, you know, we've made some progress in the area of Alzheimer's research. Some of you might have heard that there was a medication approved just two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. First time we've actually approved a medication that's targeting Alzheimer's disease. And trying to, you know, there's a lot of controversy out there, Clara. They, it's not the best a lot of people don't think it's the best medication out there. There's some problems with it. There's high costs. There's, um, you know, there's, there's some issues. But what it did is opens the door for other medications to follow that path. And so I do see in the coming years, we're gonna see a lot more medications approved. We, we're working tirelessly here. I could tell yeah. you, we yeah. didn't stop during the pandemic. Right. We kept going. We actually opened, we went from five days a week to seven days a week to actually spread out visits so that people weren't, you know, there was a little more social distancing. We actually, so we worked very hard. And, um, and so I'm hoping that the fruits of our labor will be that we're gonna actually come up with a, a new medication and more new medications over the coming years. Absolutely. And that I'm glad you mentioned that as your closing remark, because one of the things that I'm working to do as we're coming out of this pandemic is to address our disparities. Yeah. Um, when it kicked off, we were just trying to make it to the next day. Yeah. So there are many people who have not addressed our dementia, our Alzheimer's, our um, cancer, our diabetes, you know, exercising. I mean, who didn't have, you know, even dumbbells in the house and we did nothing. We were trying to get through the next day. Right, we could right. have done something, but our mindset was yep. so focused on getting through this. You yep. know, here we are 15, 16 months later. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just been a real hustle. It's been a struggle. 
Clara, you know, I, I talked about my pillars of brain health before. So many of them were affected in, a, affected in a negative way because of the pandemic. You know, I talk about trying to keep your stress down or keep reduce your anxiety. That can actually help you have a healthier brain. But during the pandemic, everybody's anxiety was up. You know, eating better is a really important thing. And people weren't going to the store as much and probably were actually eating you know, more fast foods and that sort of things. And it was that's not good for you. Um, getting better sleep is really important for you. And people were too anxious and they weren't sleeping it as well. Yeah. I can just go on and on and on. There's so many things that this pandemic, it was kind of like a you know, a domino effect. It caused this, it caused this. And what happens is, you know, our, our memory might be worse off because of the pandemic. Absolutely. So what I will do is this, um, everyone, please visit Senior Talk Media. You're going to see the information for Great Lakes Clinical mm -hmm. Trial. They're going to be hitting the ground. We're going to be rocking it together. <laughs> right. I look forward to it. And I tell anybody, if you're really interested in having presentations brought to your community, call our number, the Senior yes. Talk Live and Learn series. We're getting ready for July dates. Yes. We are asking that your administrators or someone call our office so that we are make sure that you're 90% vaccinated. We still be wearing our face masks because we yes. believe in it. We believe right. in it. We believe <laughs> in it. And more importantly, if you would just like for Great Lakes to be a part of your community events, they are welcome to do so. You can call yes. them at 773-275-3500. So, to all of our viewers and listeners, thank you so much for making us a part of your day. All you have to do is visit Senior Talk Media. Steve is a major, major, major presenter for our friends at Syscript. <laughs> Whoa! Yep. And, I, and I don't charge, Claire. I think it's important people realize I don't charge a fee to go do my talks. People are like, oh, how much does it cost for you to come do a talk? It doesn't. It, it costs time. You know, it's me coming there and I do not charge any fee for me going. Wow. That's a note in itself. But uh, you're that type of person. You're that type of person. And so is Great Lakes is that type of company. You show up. I mean, you. We, when I talked to Kim, she said you all were at um at a food drive or yep. at a farmer's market. We're at a farmer's like, market. We were at a farmer's market giving out avocados. We have a, a new study we're doing with looking to see if avocados can help lower your cholesterol. Is so we're like, I'm a I'm an avocado toast fanatic. Good. Uh, me too. Me too. Oh, I got it bad. I got it bad. So maybe there's room for me there. But let me say, everyone, thank you for your comments and your time and energy. We appreciate everyone watching us on Senior Talk Media on Facebook and YouTube. This will be rebroadcasted across many outlets that we share. But let me thank everyone and to you, Steve, and to your entire team and to Amber. How's Amber doing? You know, she, it's so funny. She, I can see her through my window out there. She's actually walking around. She says, Amber, come over here. She, she's come right here right now. <laughs> um, we're doing great. Thank, and Claire, I want to thank you for all you're doing for the community and stuff. So it's been Hi, fantastic. how are you? <laughs> <laughs> this is so, great. So I'm just excited for everyone that's been viewing. And I know we have much work to do. Um, your information and podcasts will be available on those networks. We'll share them with everyone. And I like the fact that you mentioned uh, other cities because mm -hmm. I have people who watch us in Benton Harbor, Michigan and mm -hmm. Indianapolis. So there's room if they want to come up and have the experience. I mean, you're the best in North America. And I, can say, <laughs> I like I can that. Say that for myself. <laughs> so everyone, thank you for watching Senior Talk with Clara Hubbard. You've been viewing it on Senior Talk Media on Facebook and YouTube. And please remember, in complete darkness, we are all the same. It is only our knowledge and wisdom that separate us. Don't let your eyes deceive you. I've been your host, Clara Hubbard, and our co-host today and sponsor is Mr. Steve Saystack of Great Lakes Clinical Trial. We love you, and we'll see you next time. Everyone stay tuned for a great week, and be good to yourself. Thanks, Clara. Thank you.